Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 13, verses 13 all the way to 43. We're talking about the church in Pisidia. Now Paul and his company set sail from Paphos and came to Persia in Pamphylia. John departed from them and returned to Jerusalem. But they, passing on from Persia, came to Antioch of Pisidia. They went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. I can't help but just to highlight this because so much so anymore, you know, the gospel is in churches and not in Jewish synagogues. Here they went to the Jewish synagogue, not on Sunday, on the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day, Saturday, okay? They went to the Jewish synagogue on Saturday. After the reading of the Torah, the law, and the prophets, the Nevi'im, the rulers of the synagogue sent to them, saying, Brothers, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, speak. Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel, and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people chose our fathers and exalted the people when they stayed as aliens or as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with an uplifted arm he led them out of it. For a period of about forty years he put up with them in the wilderness. When he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, that's Canaan, he gave them their land for an inheritance for about 450 years. After these things, he gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. Afterward, they asked for a king, and God gave to them Shaul, Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, that's Benjamin, for 40 years. When he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king to whom he also testified, I have found David, the son of Yeshe, that's Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. From this man's offspring, God has brought salvation to Israel, according to his promise, before his coming, when John had first preached the baptism of repentance to Israel. As John was fulfilling his course, he said, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he, but behold, one comes after me, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. See, John the Baptist was a very, very humble man. He says he's not even worthy to untie the sandals of the Messiah. Brothers, children of the stock of Abraham, Abraham, and those among you who fear God, the word of this salvation is sent out to you. For those who dwell in Jerusalem, Jerusalem and their rulers, because they didn't know him, nor the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, fulfilled them by condemning him. Though they found no cause for death, they still asked Pilate to have him killed. When they had fulfilled all things that were written about him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and he was seen for many days by those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses to the people. We bring you good news of the promise made to the fathers, that God has fulfilled this to us, their children, in that he raised up Jesus, as it is also written in the second psalm, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And this is found in Psalm chapter 2, verse 7. Concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, he has spoken this, I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David. And that's found in Isaiah, Yeshiahu, chapter 55, verse 3. Therefore, he says also in another psalm, You will not allow your Holy One to see decay. And that is Psalm 16, verse 10. For David, after he had in his own generation served the counsel of God, fell asleep, was laid with his fathers, and saw decay. You see, Paul was making it clear here that David wasn't speaking of himself, even though he was speaking in the first person. He was speaking, being led by the Spirit of God. You see, he let the Lord speak through him. He let Yeshua, Hamashiach, 
who existed before the creation of the world speak through David. And you see, this is why David also was a Christian. You can call him a Christian because he not only knew Jesus and believed he was the Messiah, but he also let Jesus speak through him. How close a relationship he must have had with Jesus. Verse 37, but he whom God raised up saw no decay. Be it known to you, therefore, brothers, that through this man is proclaimed to you the remission of sins. And by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest that come on you, which is spoken in the prophets. Quote, Behold, you scoffers and wonder and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which you will in no way believe if one declares it to you. And that's found in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. You see, the Gentiles also observed the Sabbath. The Gentiles also knew and accepted the seventh day as the Sabbath. It doesn't say they met on Sunday, okay? They met on Saturday, the Sabbath, as the Jews have always met on the Sabbath. The Gentiles also went by this schedule of worship. Now when the synagogue broke up, many of the Jews and of the devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, urged them to continue in the grace of God. Here's the first instance we find where Paul draws somewhat of a contrast between the law of Moses and Yeshua, okay? But he isn't really drawing a contrast. What you got to understand is this, okay? You see, the people read the law of Moses. The people was very dedicated to the law of Moses. But you see, a lot of them, even as Jesus said himself, you search the scriptures, but the scriptures you're reading, the law of Moses speaks of me. It's all about me, okay? And so this is what Paul is talking about here. There were people who read and knew and even memorized the law of Moses, but didn't make the connection, didn't connect the dots between the law of Moses and Jesus. If you really know Jesus, you will know the law of Moses as well, because they are one in the same. Yeshua, Jesus, is the Word, the Word of God, the law of Moses in the flesh, okay? You see, back in those days, there were a lot of people who claimed to know the, the law of Moses, but they didn't know Jesus. You see, it's impossible to say, I know the law of Moses, but not Jesus, because the law of Moses speaks of Jesus, okay? But today, we got the opposite. We've got a lot of people who say they know Jesus, but they reject the law of Moses, and that's just the opposite. That's just the flip side of it. I mean, it's impossible to really know the real Jesus and reject the law of Moses, because they are both the same. Because Jesus is the law of Moses personified. He is the word in the flesh. Just like it's impossible to really know the law of Moses and not know Jesus, okay? Because they are one and the same. The law of Moses speaks all about Jesus. So if you know Jesus in truth, you, you know the Torah in truth. If you know the Torah in truth, you know Jesus in truth. They go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. And this is what Paul was saying here. Also notice the very unique phrase that says that Paul urged the people to continue in the grace of God. What does that mean, you might say? Well, you know, if you go to the book of Titus, and we're going to get there very soon, God willing, the grace of God is not just something, it's not like, well, God just covers, you know, just blinds himself to your sin. That's not true whatsoever. I mean, read Revelation chapter 2 and 3. What Jesus had to say to the church, he certainly wasn't blind to their sin. God certainly wasn't blind to the sins of those who called themselves the people of God, the church, or the believers in Yeshua. That's not the case whatsoever. The grace of God is the power of God that enables you to repent of your sin and to stay free and clear of your sin. That's why Paul said in the book of Titus, the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness. Okay? Very, very powerful. Okay? Because a lot of people think, well, the grace of God will cover me. I'm covered by his grace. No, you are empowered by his grace. The grace of God is not powerless. 
We are empowered by his grace to walk with God in repentance, in humility, and in obedience. Remember, seek him with all your heart and you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.